one can divide the research process in three and I would say even four general steps. You first have to formulate your research project, yeah? the formulation phase. After the formulation, we have the so-called execution phase. The execution, that means actually collecting data yeah? and thinking about the right methods to analyze the data. Yeah? And then actually, of course, there's the analysis yeah, of the data that you have collected. And finally, yeah, you should come up with certain conclusions. Yeah? There's not a single research study that ends with the analysis section. Yeah? You always have to write yeah, a concluding section. Yeah? You need to look, for example, whether the, uh, or you need to summarize whether your um, hypothesis found, result, uh, found support or not, and what that means, actually. Yeah? Um, these steps are interconnected and also interdependent. Yeah? So uh, very often the resources yeah, that you have, they will allow you um, to formulate the research question or the whole research in a much broader way if you have many uh, resources, for example. Yeah? So that would mean actually um, uh, that you can um, also use quite a lot of more data yeah? or using different data sources, for example, making a comparative study or the like. Yeah. In any case, your research strategy is always a mixture of so-called inductive and deductive activities. Yeah? Or here it is written an inductive and deductive style. Yeah? And inductive means we go from the specific yeah, to the more general level. And deductive means the other way around. Yeah? So inductive means we have a special case, a specific problem we are interested. However, through yeah, our empirical research, we build then, yeah, um, and, and our observations, we build then yeah, a theoretical framework that should hold true also in other realms. Yeah? In, the, in the deductive uh, uh, approach, we go the other way around. We first look at literature and results that have been established in different realms. Yeah? And then we use this theory that we have found there in order to do our own research in our specific field. Does that mean that we simply replicate what has been done in, in, in previous research in, in different fields and now we apply it to our own field? No, probably not. So when we do research, yeah, also in the, uh, when we do research in the deductive approach, we look at results, yeah, at literature, yeah, um, or research that has been done elsewhere. And we formulate then a new hypothesis. So we use things that are already known, in order to formulate something new. Yeah? And this is the recombination of knowledge. And again, it will pop up later on, I think today. Yeah? And this is really the tricky bit. This is really difficult. Yeah? To build a new hypothesis which thinks yeah, with literature, with results yeah, that are already there. Yeah? And we have to, to build something new out of that. Yeah? Um, uh, and that is not easy. Yeah? And even if you have an idea for a hypothesis, you really need to describe exactly how you came up with that. Yeah? So you need to develop it, you need to deduce it. Yeah? And that is, I, that is really not easy. Yeah? So we distinguish between the inductive and the deductive style. Yeah? And um, here I have depicted the research strategy in the so-called um, deductive approach. Yeah? And here you see that even we are in the deductive approach, yeah, 
we also do some kind of inductive um, activities. Yeah? But nonetheless, actually, yeah, it is called um, deductive. Yeah? So we, have, we start usually with a specific problem that we face. The first thing that we need to ask ourselves is what might be general about our problem. Yeah? Even though we face a specific problem that we need to resolve, yeah? um, we need to ask ourselves actually what might be a general aspect of that. And this is a certain kind of uh, inductive, or this is not a certain kind, this is an inductive activity. Yeah? The, the very first research idea that has been mentioned was on uh, the power distribution between wives and husbands and how this actually influences the uh, spending of the household income. But of course, when you, when you talk about power distribution, yeah, you might want to read actually very general uh, literature on power yeah, and how power develops, how leadership develops, yeah, how power is usually distributed in diff uh, among different entities of social communities, for example. Then you might um, uh, go a little bit more specific and you might want to read um, literature on family formation, yeah? literature on discrimination or on uh, cultural differences between different countries. So that means you look, you look at the very general aspects of these and you have to ask yourself what are the general aspects. The next thing that you need to do is then to identify this relevant literature. Yeah, I already mentioned it. So yeah. when you ask yourself what is general about my specific research question, yeah, you are then also looking with certain keywords for the literature. Yeah. And then of course you retrieve, you need to retrieve the general information from the literature. Yeah. And then you use this information in order to formulate your hypothesis, to deduce this hypothesis. So this is the formulation phase here. Yeah? Yeah. And then you apply this information to your specific case. So that means you are now looking for data in which all of this information, in which also the hypothesis that you have formulated, yeah, can be used and tested. Yeah? And this is then the execution phase. You need to collect the data and apply the methods with which you can um, uh, apply the information that you have gained here yeah, to your specific case. In other words, you have to collect data with which you can test your hypothesis. And then you develop yeah, an idiosyncratic solution for your specific problem. Yeah? When you test the hypothesis that you have developed, yeah, um, you should then actually come up with certain solutions to your problem. And then finally, in the concluding section, yeah, you try to generalize your findings. Yeah? In your master thesis, you should not only say, well, this is the important thing for my company, period. Yeah? You should actually picture how your results could be generally yeah, um, uh, used also by, by other companies. Again, what are the general aspects of your finding? So this actually pictures a typical deductive study. You identify the relevant general literature yeah, and you retrieve the uh, relevant general information from the literature and you apply it here yeah, to your specific case. This makes it a deductive study. But nonetheless, you also have to do some kind of inductive activities. Yeah? So here it is again, the, especially these two steps, step number four and step number five, make this study a deductive study. You first read the general literature and then apply the information of the general literature to your specific case. Okay, and this makes it a deductive approach.